What's up guys, it's Drag, and this is the blaster from Hasbro that I am legitimately most excited for this year. In a year where they just haven't been able to get anything right, this is the piece of branded property that means the most to me. We could go way, way back into the way, way back machine and I could explain to you just how much I love Halo, but instead there's actually just a much more compelling way for me to get my point across. Wake me when you need me. All right, so now that we've got our Mjolnir on, it's time to, uh, well, I guess. I need a weapon. Right this way. So normally we use a knife to get into this, but this time I think we're just gonna. All right, so um, this is the MA40, and I'm much more, uh, despite what my armor might suggest, an MA5B kind of guy. That's definitely my favorite assault rifle silhouette, and I like the overall coloration of it. Now, I think that Hasbro went super safe a la Fortnite with this. They went with this white and very, very vibrant green, and then plenty of orange so that it looks very toy-esque, which is good, because, I mean, obviously, you don't want to be running around with an intergalactic assault weapon. Uh, on the, the foam flinging battlefield. However, the overall ergo of it, I mean, I'm gonna be honest, it's probably correct for when you're not wearing power armor. When you are wearing power armor, everything seems a little bit small. So coming in at 50 United States dollars, you get the blaster itself, you get 10 darts, and you get this funky magazine as well as two pieces. And no matter what I did in the literature, this riser, which definitely says Halo on it and is designed for this product, uh, serves to raise this up a level. I don't know what this is for. It looks comically raised uh, when it's on there. It does not look good at all. Uh, and then this is in and of itself just kind of a static rail attachment here. This is a standard in strike rail. And then this has a, uh, a little pseudo, not really holographic 10 round indicator. Do not make any mistakes. This is not an ammo counter. This is an ammo counter. That's the real deal from Nathaniel deal. This is a cheap imitation designed to make this a, a little more role play esque and honestly get the silhouette a little bit closer. Truth be told, I don't know why this isn't just molded into the blaster. It seems like making it a rail attachment is fruitless. It would have been much nicer if it had just been a smooth transition uh, through here. Maybe when Halo Infinite comes out and this blaster is like gameplay ready, that'll make more sense uh, as a gun in the game. Over here, since this one is not electronic in the game, uh, we have kind of a pseudo charging handle. This does literally nothing. It just sits there and lets you kind of uh, meme like you're charging the rifle and about to, to take it into battle in that form and fashion. I do want to applaud Hasbro and denounce them all in one. Uh, on this side, we've got our clear label to camera side. We've got the Nerf logo painted. We've got the UNSC logo and then the Halo logo down here. This side looks pretty sharp. Uh, on this side, they have opted not to paint any of the logos, yet they did put it through a paint operation because at least the selector switch and the pseudo release button here are, uh, are painted. So that's nice that that's not completely blank, but it's a little upsetting that the the whole thing uh, isn't decoed on both sides, especially when you're selling a premium tie-in product uh, that costs 50 United States dollars. Realistically, the blaster should cost more like 58, 60 dollars because it does require 4C batteries. Uh, with that, you get more juice, but you don't get more power, uh, theoretically. That's still a six volt uh, delivery system. For these darts, it is a bullpup style flywheeler. It's basically a raven on the inside if all the internals photos are to be believed. Uh, unfortunately, it might be getting lowered performance because the propulsion starts here and given that it's not an actual like you know cartridge fired thing there's no advantage to bullpup and whereas the raven would have stopped about here with like a foot of dead space and barrel drag this extends it uh, about twice as much. So you're probably somewhere around like one foot eight inches, closer to one foot 10 inches of just barrel drag in this bad boy. As far as the actual controls go, um, the mag release here is this button in the back. Uh, it is ambi and you can push that button and it'll drop out. I guess the, the feed lips on this are not doing a great job. You get some custom halo darts. They're green and gray, which means that not only do they match my outfit, but also you're gonna lose them immediately if you play outside because that's what happens to green darts. That magwell's not terrible. And then the magazine, of course, is custom. It's got this uh, extra kind of molding on the bottom of it. The top is just a standard in-strike magazine. This'll take most magazines, but no drums, apparently. Pretty much any flat, like, magazine, any of the, the stick mags will work in this, but the 
drums will not due to the extra lips coming off of the molding. This is definitely an aesthetic matters blaster, not a performance matters blaster. And that's a real shame because this would have, uh, this is everything that I would have wanted back when I was playing Halo Nerf Wars. The only other feature is in the back here. There is a jam door. Of note, the jam door doesn't open all the way, so you still kind of have to snake your way in there, but if you want to access this blaster, there's a jam door in the back that fits nicely into the cheek molding here. Uh, rev trigger down here, main trigger to fire. Oh boy, it's elite standard performance. The only other thing of note that's just interesting to me from a design perspective is that this is the battery tray molded into the sidewall here. They had a perfectly good foregrip right here that they could have used to put a bunch of chunky heavy batteries in. And for some reason, somebody decided, eh, instead of putting them in the logical tube shaped part of the molding where we could have very easily hidden the, the aperture on the bottom or whatever. Now let's make a big old panel on this side of the blaster. After all, we're not gonna paint it anyway, so. Does it even matter if that side's ugly? Dang. All right, let's take it outside. Let's put it over the chronograph. Let's give you our final thoughts. So while my optics are kind of fuzzy right now, we should be able to get a few over the chronograph for you and uh, talk about the overall practicality of the MA40. Let's, uh... <laughs> Oh, Coop would be so pleased. All right, guys, so I legitimately can't really see very well out of the helmet. So in terms of the practicality of the MA-40, you're better off buying a Raven if you just want a blaster. If you want a flywheel blaster, you should be buying the Dart Zone Spectrum anyway. Uh, but we'll put a couple down range. Uh, I should have one of the aforementioned stick mags here to show you. <laughs> All right, there we go. Um, Fellas, it's not easy being a super soldier. Uh, these are a little tighter, uh, but they don't look terrible. Uh, overall, ergo for the blaster isn't bad. I can tell you that like in the suit, the ergo is almost ridiculous, but foregrip is comfortable, stock is comfortable, cheek rest is comfortable. Actually not a bad blaster. The grip is the only complaint point, just cause it's a little bit thin. Let's uh, take some very precarious steps out uh, here and we'll pretend that there's some grunts out there uh, having a birthday party or something. And then we'll uh, ruin their day. LOL, never mind. No, we won't. Um, so we'll check our jam door here. And uh, we have an issue already. Uh, hard to say if that's an issue with the MA40 or an issue with the magazine. Once more with feeling. Obviously, there's an electronic lock in here. Blaster will not fire unless it's closed. Oof. Um, I'm gonna be honest with elite darts. We're barely getting ranges of 25 30 feet You would this needs a lipo overhaul really bad because let's be honest the lipos are cheaper than the C batteries Blaster overall looks incredible for me. This one's a must-buy But it's pretty obvious right now how big a fan of this franchise I am it needs a gnarly paint job It needs a complete overhaul and the amount of barrel drag here cannot go understated These darts are way slower by the time they exit the muzzle than they were when they left the flywheel cage uh, overall blaster 
Blaster needs a little bit of love to be like practical in any sense, but most people are buying this as a collectible, which uh, begets my only other point. Did you guys see how gnarly that Amazon box was? They shipped it in the box with a label slapped on it and then threw it on my doorstep. I normally have nothing but nice things to say about Amazon Prime, but for a collectible piece that I paid 50 United States dollars for, they did me really, really dirty. That said, I'm gonna do it dirtier by sanding it down to 220 and painting it up into something really, really cool. If you're a diehard Halo fan, throw me a like for this review. I think that this blaster is amazing aesthetically and very poor functionally, which is more or less how I felt about the Fortnite tie-ins uh, and the Overwatch tie-ins before them. At least the Overwatch tie-ins were rival and tended to be pretty, pretty nice. Uh, this guy needs a lot of love to be a proper foam flinger, but in the meantime, it looks really cool doing it. I'm super stoked for Halo Infinite. If you'd like to watch me play video games poorly, you can always catch me on twitch.tv backslash vampire drag. And uh, when Halo Infinite drops, we'll definitely be, uh, be playing through probably the entire franchise at that point. But uh, that's the MA40. Uh, I'd rather have an MA5B, but overall, uh, it's toyish where it needs to be. It's tactical where it needs to be other than that. And it is a really well executed example of making a functional prop, which is to say that this prop is fully functional. I imagine other Spartan cosplayers are going to be picking these up for a long, long time because $50 for a cosplay piece like this is stellar. Although, admittedly, they're just gonna hit it with black rattle cans. We're gonna do better than that in the mod guide. Throw me a like so that, that can happen soon. As always, guys, much love. Blast on, Drac out.